Hey Nintendo fans and collectors, this is Lithium017 from my channel, Nintendo Collecting 101, bringing you a how-to video for making your own database for your game collection, your consoles, accessories, and anything else that you might be a collector for. First and foremost, I should let you know that actually I tutored Microsoft Excel and Microsoft Word for that matter when I was working at a college on my cooperative work terms while I was in university, so I am pretty good at this. Hopefully I can bring it back down to basics to make this accessible for everyone so that you can learn. Here you are looking at a document that I made pretty quickly. This is some Nintendo Entertainment System games. So here you do see game, you see CIB, which I will refer to as cartridge instructions and box. Then you have the inserts, the price I paid, the value, what they sell for, comments. Then I have the totals here at the bottom. I also have totals per game, and I also have this handy dandy chart. So we're going to be starting from the beginning. Hopefully you know a little bit about Microsoft Excel already because I won't tell you everything, hopefully I'll tell you everything you need to know. Here's a new workbook, let's name our sheet, Nintendo Entertainment System Game Collection. Sure, now I'm going to make that a little bit bigger for you in the video, you can change the font size to whatever you want, I made it 24 and I bolded it. Then go a few rows down and we're going to enter game quite simply for what the name of the game is. That makes perfect sense, the name of the game. Let's increase everything maybe to size 20, that will be fine. After the game, I'm going to put in CIB for that cartridge instruction and box. Some people call it complete inbox. Then I'm going to put inserts. After that, I'm going to put what I paid for, or how much I paid for it. Now you notice that it doesn't quite fit into that box. I'll get to that in a minute. Then I'm going to put what I think the value is and then what I think I can sell them for, and the last comment, or the last section I'll put in is comments. Now, I want to make all of these a little bit bigger. I don't think they're big enough. So the game one I'm just going to drag over. Maybe your width could be something like 30. Just anywhere around 30 would hopefully be fine. You can make it a little bit longer. Some games have long titles. For the ones in the middle, if you want to change the column width, you can do the same thing that I did for A, or you could right-click on them, go to column width, and you might want to make these something like four in my case, I'm dealing with centimeters. I'm going to center these items and my comments, I'm going to make a pretty big box because comments can be as long as you want them to be. Now I'm going to format some of these to be a certain type of box. Every box in Excel is kind of set up to be general right now, but we want these first three to be text. So I'm going to highlight the first three columns. I'm going to then go to right click on the top by where you highlighted so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go to format cells and I'm going to make those text and then click OK. Same thing for comments, let's do the exact same thing right now, format cells, let's change them into text. Then these three are going to be dollar amounts. You could go up here and click the currency button or you could right click, go to format cells. You can go to currency or you can go to accounting, either one is fine. And now when you put in a number in those boxes, it will come up as a dollar whereas in these ones it'll just come up as text. So let's erase that for now. Next, you're going to want to maybe make this look a little bit different, so you could bold them. You could also add a border. A border is right here below the text. You could put in all borders if you want. You could even add a highlighter or a fill color or something like that to make it look better. Now I'm going to put in at least a game or two. Let's put in Super Mario Bros. 3. And we can also put in maybe something like Tetris and Metroid. We won't need that many examples for now. CIB, cartridge instruction box. Sure, for the first one I bought all of that. Maybe this one came with a map. Perhaps I paid $15 for it. But I actually think it's worth $25, especially because it comes with a map. But maybe I could only really sell it for $22. You want to make sure when if you're a collector and you're ever thinking about selling them, you might want to keep in mind what you might want to sell it for. You might not have this column, you might want to delete it, maybe you'll just have these two. Comments could be anything ranging from the quality of the item, maybe the label is torn, you never know. Now I'm going to make this again bigger because a lot of them are big already. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. 24, I believe that's what they were, that's a little bit too big. Let's go to 20. 20 looks pretty good. Now for Tetris, maybe I just got the cart, maybe it has no 
inserts. Maybe I only paid $5 for it, but I think it's worth 10. Maybe I can sell it for eight. No comment for that one. For Metroid, maybe I got the cartridge and the instructions. Maybe it comes with some sort of a card inside of it. Some of them come with uh, Vipo cards or things like that. Maybe I paid for this one 12, but I actually think it's worth 20 and I can sell it for something like $18. Maybe the comment of this is instructions are bent. Something like that. Add your own instructions in. The next thing I suggest you do is learning how to alphabetize everything. You're going to select all of your entries, but you're not going to select the top entry with your titles. Select your entries, all of them, I'm only doing three for this quick video, and then you're going to go to data, which is one of your ribbons at the top. After you click data, you go to sort on the left. Ascending will be in alphabetical order. M becomes before S, which comes before T in the alphabet. Now they're in alphabetical order. So at any point, you can alphabetize them by selecting them, going to data, and then also clicking on your sort filter ascending. If you do descending, it will be the reverse order, reverse alphabetical order. Now we need some totals. We clearly don't need the total for your game, the CIB, the inserts, but we do need total for these three here. Paid for, value, and sell for. Here is your F of X box. F of X is basically just a formula. So when you click on a box, usually that is empty. If you have a value in it, you will see the value there or for text. Here when we click on this box, we're going to start our formula, which always starts with an equal sign. We are doing a sum, which is a total. Then you put an open bracket. We are going to select the range of values for these cells. Basically, we're going to go from D3, or D4 rather. You can type in D4 or you can click it. Then we need to put a colon. The colon is very important. And then we're going to go all the way until D6. Make sure you put your close bracket. You hit enter. 12 plus 15 plus 5 is 32. That is correct. So you can do your same thing with the other few if you want. Make sure you always put in the brackets because you can run into problems and put your colon in and then click on your next one or type it in. You don't always need to input the formula. Sometimes because these formulas are the same, the program is smart. And when you go to the bottom right hand corner, you get a T crosshair. Click and hold that, drag the formula across. It will actually fix the formula for you. Now you have totals for all of your games for paid for, value, and sell for, which is great. You might want to make these look a little bit better. You might want to make them go in yellow. Sure, you could put a border around them if you want. You could even bold them. You could put totals in if you choose to do so. Now, just say you bought a new game. Do you need to remake this entire document? Definitely not. All you would do is go to where one of your entries in is, but not usually the first one. You can run into problems. One of your second or third entries, click insert. Now you have a new insert. So I went to the left, I went to where the rows are, I right clicked, I select insert, there's a new row. So let's put in a new game, let's put in Zelda, maybe we got that CIB, that came with a map, maybe I paid $18 for it, it's actually worth $30 let's say, but I think I could sell it for $25, and it's in great condition. Excellent. Now I didn't use this one, so you can go ahead and delete that row. You might have noticed that while we were totaling this, this number did change to 50. So I just put in Zelda, just say that was zero and there was nothing entered. It says 32, just say I paid 18 for it. All of a sudden it jumps to 50. Same things with these. They were automatically calculating the sum, which is very, very helpful. Always remember to alphabetize if you're that kind of person because it's very simple to do in this program. Ascending, Zelda jumps to the bottom. Boom, we're done. So that was pretty easy. Next, if you want to do totals per game, so totals per game, I'll put in a little section there. Maybe total number of games. Then you could do total cost or total paid for per game. You could also do total value per game and sell for per game, which would be fine. Now I'm going to move this box open a little bit more just so that I can actually see what I'm doing. Here I'm going to make this all its own box. So here I'm going to actually just make this look a little bit better. I'm going to add a thick border around the title for it. I'm going to bold it. Now for these ones, all here because these are where my values are going to go, I'm going to again maybe put a thick border and then I'm also going to put in all borders. So there you go, you can kind of see what that did. Again, maybe you might have to work with this a bit. Maybe add the thick border afterwards, so now you have the thick border around it. 
Now for these ones, we're going to input a little bit different formulas. For the first one, total number of games. In this one, we need an equal sign for the formula, but we actually need a count. We are counting how many games we have. A count counts numbers in a box. You can't really count text that easily. There is a way to do it. But what you're going to do is basically just count how many games you have based on how much you either paid for them, the value or you sold for. You just need to have an entry, entry for every single box. I'm going to do what I paid for them because that makes the most sense to me. And then I'm going to put my close bracket. Now in this one, it's not coming up as a formula. Sorry, we can just see the formula. The reason for that is because we edited this box to be text. We want to select these boxes now. We want to right click. We're going to format cells and we're going to change these back to general, which shouldn't take too long. My Mac was just thinking for a second. So hopefully back to general. Now that should work. So let's input that again and hit enter. Control Z and we hit enter and we get the total of number four. So if you're still seeing the formula, you probably just have to click on it and enter. You can see, yes, we do have four games. If we entered another one, that would change. So just to show you really quickly, insert. If I had another value here for another game, let's say Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, sure. This number should change up to five. And it's not. Why not? What's our problem? Because we went to paid four. So let's control Z out of that, hit enter. So I do need to enter in my information. I need to make sure I have something in for paid for. Maybe I only paid $10 for that one. Value is maybe 15 and sell it for 13. Now the number is five and that went up. Again, I'm going to alphabetize this, but it is in alphabetical order already. Excellent. Now for the total that you paid per game, you want to actually take how much did you pay for all of the games? So you're going to click equal, then you're going to enter this one right here. This is how much you paid for all the games. But next we need to divide to see how much we paid per game. So you hit divide and then you're clicking on this box up here. In my case, it's B12 in this case. I hit enter and then it says $12. That's just the average of how much you paid for the game each. Total value per game will be very similar. Click equal. Now this time I'm selecting the value amount. I'm clicking divide by and then I also click this box here for the how many games I have. Then this last box, equal, same thing. You click on the cell for, you divide by, and you have to click on that box. If you clicked and you didn't put B12, if you just put divide by five, it will always think you only own five games, when in fact that's definitely not the case. So here you have how much you're paying per game, which will obviously change every time you insert something. So let's insert maybe Zelda 1, maybe this was Zelda 2, usually not called Zelda 1 and Zelda 2, maybe you just got the cartridge, you paid $10 for it, you think it's worth 15, maybe you can sell it for 12. Excellent. See now this goes to 6, all the values changed, these values here changed as well, which you can see when I enter, especially this last one, sell 4 per game, you can see this go up, if I put in 12, it will change. So hopefully this helps you make this sheet. If you want to make a chart, a really quick way of making very easy charts is to first select the data here, the numbers. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on the name, paid for. You're going to drag all the way down to the bottom right of your last entry. Not your totals, but just down to your last entry. They're all selected. Then hold Command or Control. I'm using a Mac, so for mine it's Command. You're going to then select the game titles, not down to total. And then you have those selected. Make sure you do it in that order. The numbers first with the titles, then the game. Then you're going to go to Chart. You can go to any kind of chart you want. I find a line graph works great for this. Select the line graph, and there you have it. Already made, very simple, very easy for you. Pretty much made with all the names of the games and everything like that, and even the values. Now I have red for me is value. Blue is what I paid for, and green is what I sold for. So very, very easily I can see blue I paid for, red is value. I'm making a lot of money on my games. You can add in your title of your chart or anything like that under chart layout, chart title, title above chart, Nintendo, or you can just put NES game collection, and of course spell things correctly, especially in a video. And now I have my game collection made. The more entries you have actually, this text will automatically change to go vertical so you can see them. If you can't see this text because it's too small, just double click, go to font, wait for font to come up because sometimes it's a little slow. 
and there we go it thinks and then we'll increase this size to say 14 or 12 just so that you can see the values maybe you can't see the title of the games they'll have to stay small then all of a sudden you have this handy dandy chart so hopefully this video was helpful for you to make your own game collection now I should tell you this is just for the Nintendo Entertainment System so I'm going to name this sheet at the bottom NES just say you have another console of games or controllers you can name this one SNES you can name this one maybe consoles so I can show you what I'll actually do with all of those what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to this sheet I'm going to highlight everything I did there we go I'm going to copy it into my SNES sheet here is everything it looks messy the reason why you get number signs is just because the boxes are not wide enough for you to read what is going on and what fits in the box as soon as you make those boxes wide enough the numbers jump back out at you and again I'm just going to make these a certain width so I can actually see what I'm doing four will be fine comments make it nice and big now in this case I'm going to delete all of my entries because I won't have anything here you see divide by zero means there's a problem as soon as you enter something in it will be correct so that's fine now here you have a template for your game collection you could put game up here here we might put SNES to have that but basically this is a template you can add more things this is done for you already I will upload this onto I think uh, Google Docs so that you can actually access it yourself and use it as soon as you enter a game in like secret of mana and you start to put in what you have with it and some instructions and things like that maybe the value is 50 so for 40 great shape it's in excellent condition you can see here it's filling itself in for consoles you can do the exact same thing all over again select your outline copy it go to consoles paste it in you might want to paste it in down a few rows to give yourself some space you have to edit with all of the actual sizing of everything but in this case you're not putting game you're putting console and of course that entry will be gone and then you can actually put in whatever you want. So this should be a very easy way of making your own document. If you have any questions, feel free to post them below the video as a comment, just so I can hopefully see them and answer them. If I wasn't clear with anything, just ask a question. But I will again put this on Google Docs for your benefit. Thank you very much for watching. Feel free to fill that like bucket. Follow me on Facebook and on Twitter. And remember, as always, game on.